Hi all, welcome back to our YouTube channel. The topic of the video is substitution ciphers. So let's get started. In the last video, we learned that classical crypto systems are categorized into two categories, that are substitution ciphers and transposition ciphers. Substitution ciphers are further classified into two types, that are monoalphabetic ciphers and polyalphabetic ciphers. In this video, we are going to cover substitution ciphers in detail. So let's dive deep into it. So in substitution cipher, each character in the plain text is replaced with another character. Let's take an example to understand this. Consider the following plain text, that is cryptography, which is converted to the following cipher text. You may be wondering why we have capitalized the letters here, right? So in cryptography, conventionally plain text is represented in lowercase alphabets and cipher text is represented by uppercase alphabets. So from now on, we will start using this convention. Coming back to the topic, so here the first letter that is C in the plain text is replaced by the letter F in the cipher text. Similarly, the second letter R is replaced by the letter U in the cipher text. And similarly, all other alphabets in the plain text are replaced by another alphabet in the cipher text. After transformation, plain text and cipher text have different character set. So in our plain text, these are the unique set of characters while these are the unique set of characters in the cipher text. We can see that they are not equal, so the character set is changed in substitution cipher. From the previous slide, we can recollect that substitution ciphers are classified into two types, that are monoalphabetic ciphers and polyalphabetic ciphers. Let's understand each of this properly. Starting with monoalphabetic ciphers. So in a monoalphabetic cipher, a character in the plain text is always replaced to the same character in the cipher text regardless of its position. Let's understand using an example. Consider the plain text hello, which is converted to the following cipher text. Let's visualize the mapping of this conversion. So this is the set of unique characters of plain text and this is the set of unique characters of the cipher text. So here the H is mapped to the letter K, E is mapped to the letter H, L is mapped to the letter O and O is mapped to the letter R. So here, each character in this plain text is mapped to a single character in the cipher text. So the relationship between a character of plain text to cipher text is always one to one. This means a character in the plain text will be replaced by the same character in the cipher text and this will be independent of its position. So for example, if we just shuffle the plain text like this, the same mapping will be applied to convert the shuffled plain text to cipher text. So you can verify the same mapping is applied to convert the shuffled plain text to the cipher text. This was all about monoalphabetic ciphers. Let's move to the next one, which is polyalphabetic ciphers. So in a polyalphabetic cipher, each occurrence of a character in a plain text may have different substitute in the cipher text and is dependent on its position in the plain text. Let's call a hello example back. So here the hello plain text is converted to the following cipher text. Let's have a look at its mapping. Here H is mapped to the letter P, E is mapped to the letter Q, However, in this case, the letter L is mapped to two characters in the cipher text that is N and Z and O is mapped to the letter F. So here the relationship between a character in the plain text to a character in the cipher text is one to many. Also here the mapping is dependent on the position of the character in the plain text. So if we shuffle the plain text like this, the old mapping can't be applied. A completely different mapping is applied on this plain text. Suppose this is the new mapping, so now the cipher text will comply with this mapping. So if we convert the plain text using the new mapping, this is the cipher text generated. So this was all about polyalphabetic ciphers. In this video, we understood both the categories of substitution ciphers, which are monoalphabetic ciphers and polyalphabetic ciphers. Monoalphabetic ciphers are further classified into three types, which are additive or shift cipher, multiplicative cipher, and affine cipher. And polyalphabetic ciphers are further classified into four types, which are auto key cipher, plain fair cipher, visionary cipher, and hill cipher. We will cover each of this in great detail in the future videos. So that's it for the video, guys. Thanks for watching the video. And if you have any doubt, please do let us know in the comment section below. And if you have found the video helpful, then do like and share the video with your friends and subscribe to be the best channel for more such videos. Meet you in the next video of the CSS series. Bye bye.